Hey guys, DW Berman here. Earlier in the week I posted this video of this kind of box with this glowy, blobby, wobbly line thing going on and uh, figured, hey, I'll show you how I did that. So it's uh, not an ideal process and somewhat limited, but it can come up with some interesting looks. I was thinking in terms of trying to do a sketchy render kind of a thing, but this is kind of an offshoot of that. Okay, in Modeler, and this is the 11.6 pre-release, going to go to Create, Primitives, Unit Primitives, Unit Box. That's not the box. Did I click Box? Unit Box. Unit Primitives, Unit Box. There we go. There's a box. Let me just delete the ball. Select all, delete. Okay. Um, select connected, delete. And here is our base box object. I'm going to hit Q and name this faces. Why not? Because the faces of the object. So uh, copy this, control C, control V into the background layer. Under multiply, we're going to subdivide it a bunch of times. Subdivide, subdivide polygons, faceted, and Shift-D is the keyboard shortcut, so I'm going to do this until I get a, enough geometry where it looks like I could move it without it looking too odd. I think that's probably good enough, seven times. Switching over to edge mode, edge selection mode. I'm going to zoom in the corner of the box here, and I'm going to select the edges that are radiating out from the corner. And I'm going to do that on pretty much all of these corners. I tried, probably don't have to do on all of the corners, but I tried uh, just kind of doing alternating corners and it didn't quite work. So I'm just going to select all of the edges radiating out of the corners. And this should be the last one there. Unless there's a whole other set, which there is. So probably just need to get the vertical on this one because the others are taken care of. When I go over to select menu and do select loop, which is the right arrow by the way, and there I have all of the edges on the corners of the box selected. So now to I'll multiply, extend, extender plus, and that creates a copy of all of those polygons or all of those edges right there and it's connected to the original mesh and I want to move those off to the side so I'll go to T for move and just drag it up and out of the way. Now I'm going to switch to the point mode and I'm going to deselect all the points that are currently selected by clicking on the empty space in the interface or you can hit the slash key forward slash right click and lasso all of the points in the heavily subdivided box area and hit delete to delete those points and hit F2 to center, which was in the menu under translate, more, center, all. There we go. So now we should have a box that's all polygons and a box that's all edge polygons. They're all two-point polygons, or I guess that makes them lines, but two-point polygons in light wave terminology. Hit Q, and we're going to name this edges. And that is it for the modeling, so let's save... Uh, yeah, yeah. Wavy edge test two. Send this object to layout if you have the hub running. Okay, here we are in layout with the object in the scene. Two objects, actually. We have layer two, which is our lines, and our faces are object one. Let's go to surface editor and change our faces surface to, uh, we'll turn up luminosity and turn down diffuse. That kind of gives it more of a flatter shaded look. And let's change the background a little bit. So, oops, control F8 for the effects panel, backdrop, uh, textured environment, double click it, hit F8 to bring up the presets editor, which I found accidentally and was kind of pleased that, hey, we have preset skies, woohoo. Gray fade is what I'll pick, and if we look at it, it's actually just the gradient on the pitch, so it's not really a big deal, but if you make your own sky, you can actually save them in the uh, preset shelf. So, cool beans. Okay, so what do we have now? Let's turn VPR on, and we'll see. 
here's our scene. We can see we have the outline of our box, and we have the box. And if I zoom in, here's what we have. And let's say I want this line on this box to be sketchy, so I can turn on the uh, edges for that by going to the Object Properties, Edges tab, and Particle Line Thickness. I can make that 3. Now, because they are actual polygons and not just edges, we're actually seeing the shading from the uh, surface itself. So let's go to the Surface Editor again, and Edges, and I'm going to make it black now, temporarily at least. So there's black edges. Well, turn it up a little bit. Grayish. There we go. Now, um, that's cool, and what I can do with this is I can go to the edit nodes by, and turning it on and that brings up our node editor for edge and turbulence I'll grab a turbulence node and throw it onto the lines taper you can see we get some thickening and thinning of the lines if I turn the scale down to 0.1 you can actually see it a little more pronounced you have to do something to update the display Hey, it went away completely. Well, well, that's simple. We just turn up the line thickness until we see it again. So this is pretty cool. It's kind of sketchy. Uh, it varies the thickness, but if you'll notice that the edges travel in a perfect line, and we could have done this just on the base object without making a completely separate object. So why did I make a completely separate object just for the edges? Well, because it lets me do something like this, where I go over to the Deform tab, Edit Nodes, and turbulence again and I'm going to plug the bump into the input and now I have wavy lines they're crazy wavy but if I turn the bump ampl amplitude down we can see we actually get some nice subtle variations now of course it's going inside the box which is a problem with this technique and a big limitation and also having to create a separate object is a big limitation but you know we can do some things with this as well. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and there we have a squigglier line. And that's kind of nifty. You could actually animate this so that it changes over time, and why not? I'll make an all. Control N to make an all, and we'll call this texture reference null. And let's go to the reference object and the displacement turbulence, and there we have our object. Turbulence displacement is actually tied to that. If I come back over to the edges page, I can also, once I get back to the layer 2, make this turbulence follow the texture reference null. So now, when I move the texture reference null around, oops, <laughs> cancel that. Nope, I'm grabbing the wrong item. Texture reference null. Now when I move this, I animate this, you can see the lines are moving. And that's how I got the lines to move and animate. And rotating it also has that effect. So there's this, the squiggly line part. Okay, now how did I get the blobby color part? Uh, if you, if I look back here, if I, oh, that's the wrong thing. There we go. You can see I have a uh, wobbly colored line that's really blobby looking, and it doesn't look at all like this solid black line here. Well, that's pretty easy to do. If I go over to the again the layer 2 object which is our lines object and the edit nodes Oop, don't really want to do that part yet probably don't need to do that part at all in the particle line thickness if I make this a negative value it's going to switch to meters so I want it to be negative 0.5 meters and hey look that's kind of cool and blobby looking and we have less of an issue of it going inside the box it still does at some points but because it has a great amount of thickness to it, 
we have uh, a little bit of leeway. Let's make it a little thicker. And again, I can edit the nodes in here so it doesn't get quite as thin and it gets thicker. That's probably too thick. So yeah, this background and foreground is functioning as the minimum thickness and maximum thickness. And of course we can change contrast if we want it to be, you know, more of a dramatic change between the different sections, which I don't for this. And uh, let's see, next up is we have the surfacing and lighting. Surfacing and lighting. Okay, so let me shift click on this. And uh, well, first of all, let me go back to my backdrop. So backdrop options, and I will just turn that off. And under lights, I will turn my light, my ambient intensity off, and I'll just basically turn off the distant light. And under the faces surface, um, I'll turn this down to 0% luminosity, 100% diffuse, and hey, we don't see it anymore because there are no lights in the scene. Well, let's go to render globals, global illumination, and turn radiosity on. And now when I go to the edges and turn up luminosity, and if I really turn it up, you'll see it's actually bleeding into the uh, the color. It's actually illuminating the box that it's sitting on. Let's get rid of this gray and make it a green. And now we can really start to see that, that effect. Okay, now that gives us our base color. And there was a floor, so let's do a floor real quick. Geometry, create, ground plane. Okay, T for move, right click, move it down. It's really blotchy with these global illumination settings. So anyway, Surface Editor. I'm going to do this slightly differently. Um, edges, Node Editor. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do a Turbulence again. Turbulence. I'm going to make this red and green or something like that and plug that into color and see what we get. And I'll make it a little bit smaller, not quite as small. Maybe not quite that small. And I will turn the contrast up on this. And in order to make it move, I'm going to treat it slightly differently. I'm going to use an uh, item info. And going to grab a the texture reference null as the item info by double clicking on the item info it tells me what that is and multiply and I'll double click on the multiply and I'll change these all to two so basically the idea with this is I'm going to take the position out of that null that I've been using and I'm going to plug that into the position of the turbulence, which is kind of like using a reference object, only rotation's not hooked up. But I can hook rotation up just as easily by plugging rotation into rotation. And scaling in the scale. But with this multiply node in here, it's actually going to be moving, I believe, twice as fast. The color texture should be moving twice as fast as the um, actual squiggliness. Now that is kind of theory on my part. I haven't actually looked that closely to see if that's really what's happening, but that's my that's my theory on it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's my glowy, squiggly, blobbly line method. Again, this is the, the modeling part of this would actually take quite a while on a more complicated object, and um, this doesn't give us silhouette edges really I mean, it does in this case, but, you know, if we're on a ball, we would not see the edge of it. So hopefully you find this uh, an interesting technique and maybe have learned a few things along the way. And I hope you have a great day. Oh, by the, basically, I animated the null over time, so that's why it was moving in my animation. And it's not really moving here because I haven't animated it here. There, it's animated. Woohoo!
Um, subscribe to this channel if you like videos like this. I try to put them up. Uh, I try to put something up once a week, although it's difficult some weeks. And uh, check out my stuff at liberty3d.com. I have some great tutorials for sale over there. And uh, happy light waving.